Hey guys, here we go into a video today on Usyk's performance versus Witherspoon in his heavyweight debut. Um, and I kind of wanted to make it, you know, I'm kind of spitefully making the video. I probably shouldn't put the clips up, but um, uh, we're going to be talking about his performance and how he took the jab away from Witherspoon, or rather Witherspoon's ability to fight on the front foot and continue transferring his weight. Because um, that's what... what um, Usyk was looking to do is manipulate his opponent's positioning uh, so that he can find opportunities to land and score. Uh, now I haven't done any follow-up videos on Triple G versus Golo uh, versus um, Derevianchenko or Better Beef versus Vostik. I'm super disappointed that Vostik lost. Um, I thought that he did a good job boxing. You know, I've heard a lot of interesting ideas on that. But um, I will be looking to do some videos in the future on that. But I've got some weird copyright stuff going on right now. Um, I can't talk about it because I'm probably going to be taking Fox Sports to to court. But um, I'm still looking into how to do that uh, to make sure that they take it seriously. Because fuck you, Sp uh, Fox Sports. You're a piece of shit. Um, and I shouldn't be saying that on my channel. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you guys are scumbags, super scumbags. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and get into the video. And the first thing we're going to talk about is Usyk's active guard. Uh, look at how he's moving around the ring constantly, like giving his opponent different looks. And notice how he slips to the outside here, right? Slipping to the outside. The reason that he's doing that is watch Witherspoon when he fights on the front foot, right? So he's going to be transferring his way to his front foot here, and that's going to be when he looks to attack. Notice front foot, front foot, and as he's stepping, he takes another little step and then throws his shot, right? So he's going to be looking to attack off that front foot. Notice the same step, right? Step, 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 right? But he'll do like a little step and then another mini step. And the reason he's doing that is because that's the only way he knows how to get power into his jab. It's the only way he knows to cross his weight from his front foot to his back foot. Very similarly, the way that you do that with a hook um, like the left hook versus the jab, right? And it's the same thing for the right hand, the straight right hand, or the uh, the overhand right. Very similarly going from a straight punch to a rounded punch. And the only difference is, is the head positioning that your opponent's in, right? But everything else is going to be the same. The technique is going to be the same. But that's how Witherspoon looks to slide into his power, right? Or disguise it, or more thoroughly have, um, like, um, how do you say fluidity in his power now what we notice he's going to take this step and as he steps right he's stepping right here who sees that and starts slipping to the outside of witherspoon looking to take that angle to get to the outside but also understanding that he's in danger right now because this is when witherspoon likes to attack so he's already starting to set up slips so he can get to the outside of that shot not only get to the outside of that shot but when he brings his weight this way to his front foot just like Witherspoon, Witherspoon's not doing it with a dip, though. He's only walking and stepping. Uh, Usyk wants to put his weight on his front foot so that he can bring his weight back from his front foot to his back foot through a punch. Again, this is very similar to what Witherspoon is doing, but Usyk is doing it going backwards by slipping to the outside first, and then he's going to travel and bring his weight from his front foot to his back foot in the form of counter punches. But down the line. But again, right now, what he's looking to do is take Witherspoon's jab away so that Witherspoon doesn't have a way to attack him when he's on the front foot. Now, notice uh, Witherspoon's going to take that step, right? And he's on the front foot, but he's attacking Usyk while Usyk's on the front foot because right now they're both going to be looking to vie for that position. I'm going to go ahead and watch that clip through one more time. Witherspoon on the front foot, shooting his jab. Again, very similar to what Usyk's doing here, right? Getting his weight on his front foot. But later on, Usyk will be using that opportunity to set up his offense and throw hooks. But again, look at the look at the end of this clip here. Come on, VLC. Slipping to the outside, right? Getting the outside of his opponent's attacks uh, so that he can come back with a hook. Now, as you can see, when he extends his lead hand out there, he's very vulnerable to the right hook from Usyk. That's going to be very, very important later on in the film study. Now, as time goes by, right, 30 seconds into the fight, 45 seconds into the fight, Usyk's looking to faint, he's looking to probe, and he's looking to attack Witherspoon when he's on that front foot, right? So the first time was figuring out when 
Witherspoon wanted to attack. When he's going to transition his weight, right? You won't usually always start with the jab, right? Unfortunately for Witherspoon, he's not fainting with his right hand. So because he only has the jab open to him at the moment, Usyk needs to figure out a way to take that timing away from him. So when he starts stepping on the front foot, Usyk starts threatening him. He starts saying, hey, I'm going to attack you now. Don't attack me, right? And still has to slip the jabs, right? When he's not controlling the space, right? When he doesn't control Witherspoon, he has to be prepared to slip, right? He's not controlling him now, not controlling him now. So he has to slip when he's not controlling that lead hand of Witherspoon. Now, what do I mean by controlling the lead hand? I mean this, right? Right when Witherspoon steps on the front foot, he attacks him, right? Not a real attack, but a probing shot to figure out how he's going to react. Again, the reason he has to control him is because he doesn't want to slip right now. He knows that, that Witherspoon is very likely to attack from this position, rotating his weight from his front foot to his back foot, or stepping on the front foot. So he either needs to slip that shot, or he needs to control Witherspoon to force a different reaction, or force a different motion, which might set him up the opportunity to make an attack of his own. Now we'll just continue watching this clip. Again, controlling him, feinting him. Off the front foot, fainting him, fainting him off the front foot. And again, just continually giving him different looks, making Witherspoon think about things as he continues to look to set up his shots. Now again, Usyk continuing to control that lead hand, control the lead hand, right? When Witherspoon's on the front foot, and then when he doesn't control him, he moves off the line. Control, slip. Control, control, slip right? Very, very easy. He understands when he's in danger, and he understands what he needs to do. Now, this is beautiful, you guys. This is a beautiful um, opportunity from Usyk to land this left hand uh, to the body. Now, the reason he's able to do this is because he has control of Witherspoon. He's been fainting, he's been probing, and he knows when Witherspoon is looking to attack. So Witherspoon steps on that front foot, steps on that front foot, and then throws a shot. But because of the fact that he's transitioning his weight, right, to shoot his uh, right hand, and we talked about this just a few seconds ago, he doesn't he doesn't use his right hand to feint or hit probe. So anytime he's going to transition his weight is going to be a real punch. So all Usyk has to do is understand when the jab is coming, when the timing for the jab is coming, and then continue to control that hand, right? He knows that the, sorry, so he steps forward and Usyk tightens his guard. He knows that attack might come. Now he knows that an attack might come, so again he controls the lead hand, and now because he's controlling the lead hand, he knows when the jab is going to come. All he has to do is wait for the right hand to come, and he's easily able to slip it and set up a body shot right here. Now, the more that he does this, the more often he's going to make Witherspoon think about whether he wants to commit to his attacks. And this is going to put Witherspoon farther and farther behind, not only on the scorecards because he doesn't feel comfortable attacking because Usyk has control of the lead hand and is able to time the rear hand of him, but also put him behind because he's not going to have the data, the information that he needs to set his punches up. And that's going to put him even farther behind his opponent because he's not going to be feinting, he's not going to be probing. Now again, Usyk looking to feint, Faint, control that lead hand, right? And he knows that Witherspoon is looking to um, transfer his weight through the punch, uh, through the front foot, right? So he's, so Witherspoon's going to take a step on that front foot, and then Usyk attacks him and says, hey, what do you think about that? Steps on that front foot, and then he goes to attack him. But notice the timing, how he's going to catch him in between this step. Again, because he knows when those punches are coming. He knows when the timing is coming. Now, Witherspoon does a good job of planting his foot and getting his counter off, but what what, what, what Usyk is looking to do is time uh, Witherspoon in between his weight transfer, right? Now, this is exactly what you want to do when your opponent is transferring their weight from their back foot to their front foot, is catch them in between this weight transition so all of their weight walks into that shot. Now, that's the goal of, of your jab, when you're landing your jab. Not when you're fainting or probing or looking for information from your opponent, but this is how you want to land your jab, is when they're crossing their weight over from one side to the other. That's when you get your opponent, you know, um, um, walking into the shot. That's, th that's where that comes from, walking into a shot, right? And that's where more power is going to be, because now you have your opponent's weight transition 
adding power to your punch as well as your own weight transition. Now, again, Witherspoon doing a good job there of coming back with the counter. And I think we're going to be talking about that a little later. I chopped these clips a while ago. But, um, oh, and I kept this one here, this clip. Again, this is the same attack, right? Witherspoon stepping in between that step. Um, Usyk is looking to time him, right? So he knows that that jab is going to come off that timing. So he's able to slip it and come back with his own counter. Now, Witherspoon is countering him as well, uh, which is important. The reason that I kept this clip in there is because I want to show you um, why it's important when you step with your jab always to step through your heel and not your toes. And you can see that uh, Witherspoon is able to do that and block his weight transition, right? So he can come back with his overhand right as well, right? In spite of the fact that he's getting timed and he's getting countered um, off of his jab, he maintains correct body positioning so he's able to land his own counter there. Um, now, I don't want to talk too much about that because Witherspoon's still getting dominated at this point in the fight. Even though not a lot's going on, he's basically lost all of the, all of the boxing portion of the fight, um, but he does do a good job of not compromising his body mechanics to land that good overhand right counter of his own now again Usyk doing the same thing controlling him controlling him off the front foot now watch every time Chaz takes a step on that front foot right front foot and Usyk feints him front foot Usyk slips to the outside just a little front foot Usyk controls him with the jab controls him with the jab controls him with the jab and then counters him uh, with the jab control now, when he's slipping to the outside, again, he knows that, that Chaz is looking to step on that front foot, so he's slipping to the outside. Again, every time that uh, Witherspoon transfers his weight or makes an attempt to transfer his weight, this elicits a reaction from Usyk because Usyk understands that during the rotation of your weight, that's when you're in danger, that that's when your opponent has the opportunity to... Uh, to let a power punch go. So again, Uzik is just controlling him and saying, hey, don't transfer your weight, don't transfer your weight, don't transfer your weight, don't transfer your weight, right? Control. And then when he doesn't control him, very, very smart, slipping to the outside. Now, Witherspoon's trying to, you know, change the timing a little bit, right? He's got that little step and then step, buddy. Step, whoops. Step, step, right? So he tries to use a kind of a feint there to control um, Usyk, but for the most part, Usyk has complete control of him, um, especially because that little step, step feint is not going to be able to get Usyk out of position because Usyk's not really committing his body weight, right? These are, these are only slight feints and slight slips, right? He's not fully committed to either direction. And all of this slowly begins to break down Witherspoon's jab and stop Witherspoon from being able to not only attack Usyk with his lead hand, but land that jab as well. And again, we have Usyk controlling him every time he's on that front foot, right? And now he's starting to force Witherspoon to slip to the outside as well so that he's not being completely controlled by Usyk. And that's going to also allow Usyk to start landing his punches as well. But again, Usyk is looking to time him and control him on the front foot. Control. Control, 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 control. And then fainting off of that front foot, fainting that control here, and then going to the body. Moving on, only a couple more clips. Fainting, fainting again to the body, right? And then this is going to continue to control... Um, to control Witherspoon and set patterns for Witherspoon to start trying to set up his own offense. Again, remember when we we saw a few moments ago how he started using the double feint, the double step, the step, and then take another step to try to control Usyk? Well, he's going to start doing that and fall farther behind in the feinting, the probing, because his original steps are going to start opening up opportunities for Usyk to counter him as well. Because again, he's reacting to Usyk in the first place, which means that Usyk knows how he's going to react as well. Because uh, again, Usyk's a very, very good fighter. But again, stepping on the front foot, and then he's jabbing, right? So now when he's about to step on the front foot, Usyk feints him. So he's going to feint him again. And then stepping on the front foot, front foot, front foot. And then Usyk controls his glove. And then, whoops, boom, 
And then again, the same timing, right? Even though he's not stepping, it's the same timing. His weight is going from his back foot to his front foot, and Usyk's able to land a shot on him. But again, all of this because um, because Witherspoon always rotates his weight with his punch, right? He's always throwing his jab as a cross and never just as a, just a regular jab, right? And we haven't really talked too much about that. But again, this is all all coming down to Usyk's ability to control his opponent on the front foot while he's on the front foot and control his jab um, and the timing so he can start setting up these kinds of punches, right? And eventually, after he does this enough times, he's going to be able to completely take away Witherspoon's jab um, or rather take away Witherspoon's confidence in throwing his jab because, again, it's getting controlled every time by the lead glove or he's being slipped to the outside or... He's slipping to the outside. Again, this is the same motion, you guys. Remember the pattern that he was setting up before. Here. Wait, not this one. Oh, this one. Right? Control the lead glove. Slip to the outside. Right? It's the same motion. It's the same motion here. Control the lead glove. And then make him think you're going to control the lead glove and make him think you're going to slip to the outside only. And then this time, he does the same exact motion, right? This is very, very important for all of you that are learning to get better at boxing, right? Look at this slip, right? Or look at this right hand, right? It looks exactly like this slip. The same motion. The only difference is the right hand is come or the left hand from Usyk is coming out at the same time. But again, he sets up that pattern. Control the lead hand. Whoops, not this clip. Did we look at that one already? I think we did. But again, control the lead hand off that timing, and then start countering him instead of slipping, right? Because the slip counter or setting up the slip is only only used to not only get outside of that shot. But it's also to set up the timing for the right, the straight left hand as well. And the, again, the more that he does that, the more often he's going to be able to do scenes like this, where he just controls Witherspoon and keeps him in his own guard so he can eventually start setting up his own shots as well that have nothing to do with that timing. Now again, slipping to the outside, right? Now look it. When he slips to the outside here, he's going to make... Uh, Witherspoon slip to the inside to get away from a possible straight left hand because now that he's shown that he's looking to slip to the outside and shoot his straight left hand Witherspoon's going to pick up on it now Witherspoon's timing here is not very good he still would have caught he still would have been caught with that shot but he's showing awareness and understanding of that position now again Witherspoon stepping forward jab step forward jab and now Witherspoon steps forward and now he moves his way to his back foot Whoops, front foot, back foot, front foot. And now when he takes that step, front foot, back foot, front foot, he's, um, Usyk is expecting a jab here, so he slips to the outside and then comes around with the hook. Now, this is very, very, very important, you guys, because again, this is the same motion, right? It's the same motion as this, right? Get to the outside, get your weight on the front foot, now, the only difference is, while you're transferring your weight from the back foot to the front foot, you throw a right hand. Or in Usyk's case, you throw a straight left hand. Now, in this case, you're going to slip to the outside, right? And you slip the jab the same way, but instead of bringing your weight with a right hand, or in this case, Usyk's a left hand, you bring your weight back from your front foot to your back foot with a left hook. Now, again... This is the same motion that Witherspoon is making in the first clip, right? Watch Witherspoon as he walks forward and shoots that jab. The only difference is when Witherspoon walks forward, he doesn't transfer his weight from his back foot to his front foot as well as his shoulder, right? His head stays in the same spot because he's fighting kind of off the back foot even though his weight is on the front foot. To be fair, I think Witherspoon has a very, very, very confused stance. He needs to work on it. But it's the same motion, right? Front foot to the back foot. Front foot, front foot, front foot, jab, weight to the back foot, right? Look at look at the way that he transfers his weight from his front foot back to his back foot there. 
It's the same exact thing that Usyk is doing here, but Usyk is doing it front foot, back foot, through the, through the use of a hook, right? Now, again, Witherspoon just has worse technique than Usyk. Otherwise, this motion should look exactly the same. Um, you transfer your weight through your punches, you know, one at a time from the front foot to the back foot and from the backhand to the front hand or the front hand to the backhand. But it's always a coordinated effort. Now, Usyk is able to figure out the timing on Witherspoon because Witherspoon has a much more flawed technique than he does. And then again, step on the front foot, step on the front foot, and then Usyk is able to slip that jab and throw a straight left hand to the body. Now again, it's the same motion as shooting a straight left hand or as, uh, as slipping to the outside. This motion is exactly the same as this motion as well. Again, right, slipping to the outside, he could throw the straight left hand to the face or the straight left hand to the, to the body. But instead, he brings his weight back with the hook instead. But again, fighting completely off of Witherspoon's jab and Witherspoon's timing, again, because Witherspoon doesn't have the control over his body um, to, to dictate when he's going to be throwing punches and when he's not. He allows, his, tech, he allows his, his flawed boxing stance to do it for him. And then again, the same motion again, right? He knows that shot's coming, slip to the outside, and then come back. But again, imagine Usyk doing this, this motion, but without it being predicated on Witherspoon's going first, right? Just imagine that Usyk in this, in this instance is Witherspoon. Step on the front foot, slip to the outside, and then come back with the jab. That's going to be the exact same motion that Witherspoon should be doing here. Step on the front foot, step on the, wait. Step on the front foot here, and now when he takes this step, he should be slipping to the outside before he brings his jab back, right? But because of the fact that he's he's walking forward, he doesn't have an, the ability to separate his slip or to separate his weight distribution from his punches. Now, that's because he has poor technique. That's also because he trains probably a very, very improper way, um, and he doesn't have the ability to remove his his punches from his slips and his rolls. Um, and that's something that he could definitely work on. But notice the motion is very similar, right? Takes the step, takes the step. Now, instead of slipping to the outside first, right, Witherspoon, he just comes back and crosses his weight back with that jab. Whereas Usyk, you could see slip, slip, right? And then he's able to easily slip um, and get around with his weight. But look at how his weight, his shoulder, when he takes that step, look at how his shoulder goes over his front foot, right? His head goes over his front foot and his shoulders turn, right? Turn just a little bit. And then that way when he needs to slip and transfer his weight, he's easily able to get out of the line um, and pick apart Witherspoon's jab. Anyway, um, let's see. What's a clip that I can just keep playing that was really good? I don't know. We're going to go with this one. Actually, that one sucks. I don't want to play that one over and over again. I don't want to play that one either. Well, I'll just watch this one. Nah, that one's too long. <laughs> we'll just play this one a few times. So anyway, um, in what I thought was an absolute brilliant performance from Usyk, um, Anthony Ruiz gave Usyk zero credit, saying that uh, it wasn't a good performance. Um, and to be honest, it's all the things that uh, Ruiz has said since winning the title that make me think that he's not as good as I initially thought he was. Um, I actually picked him to beat AJ in the first fight. I'm picking AJ to beat him in the second fight uh, via 12-round super boring decision. Um, but I do think that that Anthony Joshua is going to beat Ruiz in the, in the rematch, and I think it's going to be easy too. I think it's going to be real easy, um, even though Joshua might not think it's easy while he's going through it. I don't know. But, um, but anyway... Uh, this was a fantastic performance from Usyk. I think that he dominated Witherspoon. He did what he was supposed to do. Witherspoon is actually not a bad fighter. He looks pretty good in spite of the fact that he, he, you know, doesn't have the greatest technique, you know, which we can clearly see here. But, um, yeah, it was a, it was a good performance. Um, as far as what's going on with my channel, um, I think I'm going to start making live streams, um, 
for live boxing events um, to watch it with you guys. A uh, very, very constant thing for my channel. I think I'm going to be doing it a lot uh, for every fight. So uh, catch the fights this weekend. Um, I know that Shakur Stevenson is fighting. Um, he's fighting a prospect. I know that there's another prospect fighting this weekend. Um, and there's also a big fight, Pro Gray versus Taylor. And I'm going to hope to be live streaming the fights. Um, not the actual fight. Although if you show up to the channel, um, I can give you a link to uh, something where you can find the fight. But um, I'll be live streaming commentary, talking through the fights, what I see. Um, and talking about like live action strategies. Who's doing what? Wh who's doing what in the ring? Who's being controlled? Who's controlling? What each fighter is looking to set up. Um, I'll do my best to have it seem not biased. Some people didn't like my seemingly biased uh commentary on the Vostick fight but I think Vostick was the one dictating the action in the fight whereas Better Beef was the one following him so obviously everything that I say in that case is going to be predicated off of the lead that Vostick is giving um, but expect all the commentary to be very s in a similar vein um, that the fighter who's reacting is going to get significantly less shout outs than the fighter who's being proactive even if the reactive fighter is winning the fight I will be talking about the person who is engaging and, and the one who's looking to set offense up, not the one who just winds up getting offense thrown in his lap. Um, but anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, and the Vostick Better Beef Breakdown, um, I haven't rewatched the fight yet. I've just been thinking a lot about it, um, about the winning and the losing of the fight and the scoring because the, the scoring in the fight was so interesting. There were so many different ideas of who was winning that fight um so i haven't rewatched it yet though i've just been super busy too but anyway like comment and subscribe don't forget to do all that fun stuff and yeah guys later